but we shall revisit. We shall respect, but we shall revisit this agenda. Oh, yes. We shall. First and foremost, we shall address ourselves to the people of Kenya. Can you imagine? Even in America, which is supposedly the largest, the greatest democracy in the world. Wakati wa lishindana George Bush, too. Na Al Gore. Supreme Court ya huko. Walienda wakasima, kwanza, kwanza, even before we discuss anything else. Technicality, hii, hii, hii. Kwanza, we are here to respect the will of the people. Wakaenda kuhesabu mpaka walikuwa wanatoa ila walikuwa makaratasi ile. Ati hii, 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 kura iko na mnadhani. Eh, eh. Eh, to reject, to accept, to reject. Because they knew as a Supreme Court, they cannot overturn the will of the people. Lakini Maraga thinks he can overturn the will of the people. We shall show you in 60 days that the will of the people cannot be overturned by one or two individuals. President Uru Kenyatta they are speaking shortly after the September 1st, 2017 uh, nullification of his election by the Supreme Court of Kenya, uh, saying, quote-unquote, we shall revisit. Many pundits have been saying, this is it. This is them over there are revisiting. Let's uh, take a look at uh, what the gentlemen are saying about this. Uh, Bonakili, let me start with you. Um, do you see this being... Uh, this supporting that case uh, by Philomena Mwilu, who has uh, fronted the same uh, argument, uh, saying that because of what the president has said in the past, this is just uh, a witch hunt, him revisiting. Well, it, is, it, it puts the proponent of that revisiting and those who are saying the revisiting is not happening in a very difficult position. When you bring such as spurious, vexatious charges against the person of a deputy chief justice. At times, you, you, leave, you raise a lot of issues about the independence of the judiciary and everything. And then again, when you circumvent the process, you remember we have Article 168, which talks about a process of how to discipline a judicial officer. Yes, they are not above the law. But there is a process, and this process is about to save the sanctity of the institution. Mm -hmm. Judiciary should be above reproach, should be above board. And how to do that, the drafters and the framers of our constitution made that remit under Article 168. Going back to the revisiting issue, when at times we might think that some things are just said as a leader, there is, a lot, there is a lot of power in what you say. Right. And when you say some things, something might happen tomorrow which might not have any correlation with what you said. But again, it will point to other side. And then the other bad optic about this case, when you have people who it is said to have been representing the Raila Odinga in the presidential petition in one side, and the other things happening in the other side, it reignites the memories of that speech. The other thing that we need to look at is this. We have had recently the Chief Justice complaining about budget cuts. It, these people might take this to mean that there is a revisiting of the judiciary. We had before that the, the, the driver of the DCJ being shot at. That is some of those things. And then again, recently we have seen there is a problem in reconstituting of the Judicial Service Commission. What we need to do as a nation, mm -hmm. we need to walk a clear path of growth and consistency. If it is a charge against a corrupt individual, let those charges be buttressed in law. We cannot have charges which are hanging and dangling like balloons, mm -hmm. which are neither here nor there. Read a strict reading of our tax law, it, our tax law and the tax regime in this country, you cannot sustain a criminal suit against a commercial transaction. And that is why we have the tax tribunals. That's why when you read the stamp duty, it talks about the penalties that will be levied. There is no, when you go for a criminal charge, it means 
this is an offense that somebody can be imprisoned. Reading of the tax, the Stamp Duty Act from around Section 111, you realize that the, the, the punitive act there is financial in nature, which means these are civil matters, not commercial. When such a things happen, it is very difficult to dissuade the public from the issue of revisiting. But having said that, we must also continuously to critique and to support the fight against corruption. Going forward, this is what will happen. Over time, we have always blamed President Uru Kenyatta for not being willing to fight corruption. This time round, if the fight against corruption is not sustained, we will not blame the president. We will blame three institutions. We will blame the judiciary, we will blame the DPP, and we will blame the DCI because the president has given them all the political goodwill they need. It is up to them now. It is incumbent upon them to realize what they do with the goodwill. All right. and finishing on the same issue, the DPP should avoid trying to put the public trust into question so that every action he'll be taking will be looked at and people will, be, will start double-guessing him. It will dent the fight against corruption. This case, the, DCJ, the DCJ case has already taken a lot of good uh, speed from the corruption fight. All right. The deputy, the director of public prosecution uh, did uh, speak to the media on the day that the DCJ uh, indeed was arrested, uh, speaking about uh, making remarks about uh, uh, the issue of uh, revisiting. Let's listen to that. The issue that you've brought about revisiting, we are an independent institution and we are not going or are not being directed by anyone or by any statements given out there. This decision was made independently of all other matters and factors that uh, you might think that might have brought this about. All right, Hezbon, what do you think is going to be the impact or the reaction of the judiciary, uh, judiciary as a whole if there's that feeling of we are being targeted? It was a judiciary, it was a budget cut, now the DCJ is being uh, targeted. I mean, what, what do, how do you think is going to, the judiciary is going to react? But I don't think they have much of a choice. I, I mean, uh, the fact that the DCJ has been brought along the corridors of justice uh, means that they, they, there isn't much that the judiciary can do, and, and more so they cannot even dare talk about the issue of revisiting. Uh, I think the due process of the law will just uh, take itself. And uh, from where I see it, I think the judiciary depends more on the public perception and what uh, the public is, 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 is seeing in all this in terms of whether it is revisiting or not, uh, and, 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 and it, it will just end there, that the public will, will determine whether the judiciary is being attacked and maybe voice its concern through the civil society, parliament, and stuff like that. But uh, to, to get the judiciary to speak about this, I think, is in itself a self-defeating. They cannot do that. Uh, uh, but again, you know, revisiting is a matter of public uh, perception, uh, that um, communication, uh, scholars talk about communication is not always what is said, but what is heard. So it might not necessarily be that, uh, you know, the, the revisiting is taking place, mm -hmm. but the fact that it was pronounced in public uh, basically pushes it away from the person who made the pronouncement to the people who listen and are now uh, watching. So it, it, it's a question of uh, to what extent do people believe that the person who made the statement actually meant that he would reverse it. And I think uh, going by what is happening, uh, it is easy to perceive that it is revisiting for the simple reason that, uh, you know, and my, 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 my good friend here who is a lawyer has talked about that, that uh, there are indicators that first there is circumventing of the process, that you're taking the DCJ as the DCJ through the corridors of justice. Uh, it has not happened. I think the, it, it, it once happened before the new constitution when, it, when, when uh, Justice Oguk was, was, was paraded along the corridors of justice in 2003. Yes. Mm. So that is one. Then secondly, we are, we are, we are looking at a, a, a commercial uh, thing which is supposed to be a civil case being brought in a criminal court. And then uh, you also realize that whatever cases that have been brought against the DCJ are, are things that actually happened some years back. And, and I can tell you for free, Ben, that if you want to dig that for, from anyone, you'll actually get. So there's a, a sense in which 
are the proponents of revisiting, or the guys who are critical of, of the establishment for committing to revisit and, and hit back at the judiciary, will actually have a case. And uh, the, the question is, how then do they propagate this conversation All right. to make it look like the judiciary is essentially under attack? But right. I don't think the judiciary as it is, unless through the J JSC, can come out and say that, you know what, now they are revisiting. All right. So, so uh, husband has mentioned uh, Justice Samuel Oguk uh, being uh, prosecuted in 2003. The DCJ is actually the fourth judge to be charged. Um, there was, of course, uh, Oguk, the Justice GBM Karaoke, who was uh, taken, uh, was charged in court uh, in 2008 uh, for uh, charged with stabbing uh, a motorist, and then Justice Said Chitembwe. But Mark, many people agree that. DCJ is the highest ranking uh, judicial officer to be, you know, brought uh, before court in such a manner. And um, even the DPP in his remarks did uh, say that he spoke to the CJ, David Maraga, uh, to tell him that he will be uh, preferring charges against the DCJ. I mean, um, do you think there's going to be an executive versus judiciary kind of cold war going on? You know what I find interesting with my country is the fact that we act like goldfish which swim one way and forget what happened two seconds before and are surprised at what happens again. Uh, I'll give you an example. We had a deputy chief justice who happened to pinch a nose once, okay? And we hounded her out of office for pinching a nose. I do not know whether Pinching a nose is a in court, according to him, for uh, the murder of an individual, okay? It is incumbent upon the Deputy Chief Justice to be able to exercise and to show us that she has incredible trust in the judicial system. The fact that we are reacting as though she's already been convicted is wrong. Two, if I was to settle a score, as it has been said is being settled, then the way to settle the score, and what Kenyans would have said that it's being revisited upon the judiciary, to me would have been the issue that the fact that the judiciary's budget was reduced. That to me is more suspicious than an individual being taken before court because if I remember the ruling correctly, there were four judges that ruled in one particular case, Justice Maraga being one of them. So if you're going to revisit, why would you revisit on one? Two, the, 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 the way to punish someone, if truly you are, then is to find the most salacious and embarrassing thing you can mm -hmm. and drag them through the court of public opinion, which is not what has happened. So to me, we are trying to connect ends that do not meet in trying to do a conspiracy theory around revisiting. Because let me tell you, if I am a thief and I happen to uh, fall out of good favor with uh, one Kipchumba, mm -hmm. but in my process of uh, thieving, I am caught by Kipchumba's cousin who is a cop, will I say that I was only arrested because Kipchumba is revisiting? Yes. If you are not guilty, it is, if you are guilty, it is not revisiting, it's being caught. If you are innocent, 
and you are being arraigned, then it is revisiting. So can we let the chips fall where they lie, mm -hmm. and let's stop connecting things that do not connect? I think just a quick one, Ben, eh, to remind me. <laughs> when we talk about circumventing the process, is uh, simply put, you are supposed to be going through the door. But tomorrow, because you saw somebody naked along the road, you, uh, you use the window. That is circumventing. The due process is you using the door. And here, when we talk about the due process for taking through a system, the DCJ, because what we are trying to do here is to preserve a position. What we are preserving is not Philomena Mwilumbete. What we are preserving is the dignity of the office of the... Wait, wait. Let me just finish to you. What happened when uh, Nancy Baraza pinched that Morao Rakerubo's nose? This is the process she went through. Accompli she went through the JSC. She was processed through Article 168. The question we are asking, and what any legal scholar or any legal practitioner outside there is asking is this, what was the hurry in processing this case when we have people Ruaraka land people are still hovering around here. When they sold government, it sold land at 1.5 billion. Listen, these are criminals, these are conmen, these are scammers. We do not need a better name to them. But you take somebody through a process which is convoluted in nature, which brings out a lot of guessing, which puts, throws a spin in the whole corruption fight issue. The other thing, Bichach, we need to ask ourselves as a quick one as I wrap, is this. There is what we call vetting. Mwilu came to the Supreme Court recently as a Deputy Chief Justice. She was cleared by KRA. She was cleared by all the seven state agencies. There is a question we need to address ourselves to. Does, do this vetting really mean vetting or we just address ourselves to issues which are just at the face of it? But because before yes. Nurdin Aji came here, mm -hmm. he was a Director of Economics Crimes at the NIS. He ought to have known and he ought to have raised with KRA that the person you have cleared has an issue with stamp duty tax. The person you have cleared had conduct with Imperial Bank. That is why, you know, when we talk about demonstrating consistency in our processes, these are the things we are addressing. But you see the thing So is these are things you say were in the position of the state, yes. but were not, were not used but, yes. when she was being vetted. But that's the They're same, being used now. That's the same argument we talked about, yeah. that it's the government who, who issued title deeds to riparian land. Two wrongs do not make a right, that's one. The second issue, that but I agree, why, why uh, let, let, me, let me finish. I agree that the process seems to be have circumnavigated. I have also said on this show that to me, the charges do not seem strong. And that's why I've talked about her trust in, the, in her own judiciary. Number three, number three, and, and let's understand each other. Number three, if I was the DCJ, okay, and I know the kind of protectionism that happens around the Kenyan uh, legal fraternity, that you know very well that if you take it to the GSC, you take it through this process, all, everybody will jump up and try to defend her. The way lawyers and people have reacted to this is the very reason why for me, from a communication strategy perspective, I will hit the top bully the hardest in that prison yard. And the truth of the matter is this, I want us to address the issue. If we are talking about protecting the office, let us then protect the entire judiciary and ask the question, how many judges today are accused of circumventing justice because of bribery all and right. corruption? Okay, all right, all right. The question, Ben, the me, question becomes end, this, yes, eh? just one thing. Eh? This, 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 the question, this the question becomes yeah. this. Eh? <laughs> are we fighting corruption or fighting over corruption? That is the question. This must have the final thoughts on this. No, no, there are so many things here. Number one, uh, Philomena Mwilu is the highest rank, ranking public servant who's been arraigned before court. And you know in the past we've said we'd like to see an MP in court, we've seen one. We'd like to see a governor in court, we've seen one. We'd like to see a retired governor, we've seen one. We'd like to see a retired uh, rather principal secretaries, we are seeing them, cabinet secretaries. There's a very high chance that the powers that be are sending, are sending a powerful warning shot to some powerful politicians in Kenya telling them that we can send the DCJ to court, yes. who are you? We are coming for you. Yes. That probability does exist. And uh, I don't have the capacity to say who is the powerful politician. But you know people are saying there are several deputies in Kenya 
One is already in uh, court, so there's a chance of sending a warning shot. To Number two, deputy. yes, maybe to another deputy. <laughs> Number two, let's go back to Mwilu. Mwilu was uh, referred to as being a member of the Wakora network. She got a serious beating in that. Then there was a social media attack and then tabloid reports. So you can see that there is a systematic direction and uh, people attacking a personality. So you wouldn't say that is uh, a coincidence. There must be a deliberate strategy to attack her. But what are the consequences of having the DCJ in court? There's a very high probability that the judiciary is going to ring fence itself. As uh, Mark has indicated, one says that there would be a number of judges who would be guilty, maybe of commission or omission. And when they see their boss under this kind of attack, they're going to ring fence themselves. So they'll be issuing orders left, right, and center. There are even people who are saying that Justice Chacha Mwita was so efficient in issuing those court orders that when he was required to make a correction, it didn't take a moment. It was done so fast. So maybe the judges would say, we are going to ring fence ourselves. Or number two, now they are going to succumb to the pressure from uh, the executive and they are going to dance to their will as they will be required. But making progress, in my view, the DPP needs to go back to the issues that affect Kenya, the corruption which is a threat to our national security. In my view, Justice Mwilu, guilty or otherwise, is not a threat to our national security. The people who are a threat to our national security are in President Kenyatta's cabinet. That person who authorized sugar to be imported uh, to Kenya right. without taking care of the quality and the quantity. That person who, because of, again, acts of omission or commission, has made IMF come to us. Now we are going to be paying a lot of resources. The fellows are treasury. Yeah, the fellows are the treasury. Those are the threats to the national security that the DPP is supposed to be focusing on. But right. having said that, give a part to the DPP. In as much as members of the legal profession like uh, Kipchumbaya are rattled, Chapter 6 is now being implemented by this case. Mm. Because you know, again, being a member of the Catholic Church, you wouldn't say these are small sin and these the are big, big sins. Right. But this small sin is going to be a lesson in the future for anybody who's going to hold public office All right. that whatever you do at the age of 18 is going to haunt you. We'll catch up with you. Should, should CSS, therefore, be taken to the Public Service Commission when they do crimes as well? All because right. if judges Good are question. treated special, Good should question. civil he, servants he's, he's be comparing the apples and question. pies. All right. He's comparing has, apples has and pies. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. 20 my, seconds on. very quick. I mean, if, if, if we just anchor ourselves on whether it is revisiting or not, I don't think it is uh, in, in, in the pressings of the people who are revisiting or not revisiting. The frame that is outside there right now is a frame that is helping the public understand that this is revisiting. All right. And there is nothing that anyone can do. Allow me to ask you a very quick question. The fact that uh, a lot of these lawyers have been referred to as NASA lawyers, and uh, we have seen uh, 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 Governor Jamong in court, uh, we have seen Governor uh, ex-governor Kidero in court, and he was not, he was, those are NASA politicians, but they are not uh, represented like that. But we see that with the DCJ. What, what, what is the perception there? Uh, that's the thing, that the fact that you have uh, brilliant NASA lawyers uh, behind uh, this case, uh, you know, supporting the DCJ, basically tells you that the narrative of revisiting is being propagated. The reason why they are protecting the DCJ is perceived outside there is because the person who vacated the All election right. is being attacked. All right, great. Then allow me 30 seconds. Again, talking about uh, these Ten lawyers. Minutes. Yeah. Any solid lawyer today would want to be associated with this case because this president, this yes. is free happening. All and right. number two, the DPP has forgotten to revisit IBC. You remember Kirako Tobiko has had indicated there were illegalities yes. and irregularities, and I think the DPP needs to revisit those All commissioners. Right. All right, very quickly, let me see what Kenyans are saying on our big discussion this morning. Tin, tin, tin Tim says, even if we start with Ruraka and other bigger cases, the bribes exchange hands, it's useless. So we start with judges' integrity. Joseph Odanga says, today, exactly one year ago, those reckless words, we shall revisit, were said, Leaders should avoid being reckless. Now it's near impossible convincing some of us that DCG Moyle is not being uh, revisited. Engineer Masisa says the revis revisiting remarks have come to pass. Talk of the judiciary, uh, reduced judiciary budget and the rest of DCG. This is just but a tip of the iceberg. Abel Kiro says, I don't see any revisiting here. We are all equal. Mushiri Wanjenga says, so DCJ, 12 million is more important than billions in sugar or raka and Kenya pipeline scandals. Indeed, they are being revisited. Economic Patrick Gather says, we do not need a priority matrix. Let everybody who is brought before judiciary face it. Let the fate be determined like the Huduma Center Madame's case in a fortnight. The judiciary is failing the DPP. They put the hearing 
on hold. Mutuko Fred, the shooting of the DCJ's Muilu's driver was to send a warning to her. Uh, rest and the new DCI DPP is revisiting in one way or the other. And finally, uh, one here, uh, uh, Jer Jerry Kimuhu says whether Uhuru is revisiting or not, and whether the charges are being big or small, if Muilu is guilty, she must fry, period. Mwenda Charles says he don't use the same strategies of hunting a rabbit to hunt a tiger. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Abdin Gurusi says, finally, the arrest of the DCJ is judicial succession political game plan to pave way for Judge Njo Kingdom. Another big discussion for another day. <laughs> Stay with us here on Sunday edition. When we come back, we shall be switching gears a bit and uh, taking you to China. The president, Uru Kenyatta, arrived in Beijing yesterday ahead of that forum for China-Africa uh, cooperation. Uh, while there, he said to meet the Chinese president, uh, Xi Jinping, and hold bilateral talks. He's said to uh, sign uh, an economic and investment cooperation agreement between China and Kenya. We'll talk about that relationship. Is it all?